FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. I was my first choice. <laughs> Donald Trump wasn't my second choice. That was Ted Cruz. But we are down to uh, two individuals here. I mean, it's pretty clear to me that uh, it is a choice between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And I clarify it down and keep it pretty simple, is uh, when you think about what's going to happen over the next four years, what has the uh, possibility and probability of impacting America for the next 40 or 50 years, and it's the Supreme Court. I just love it when smart people agree with me, because obviously they're smart if they agree with me. What have I been saying for the better part of two or three weeks now that you've been listening to me here Monday through Friday is that it's the Supreme Court, stupid. That's what this election comes down to, bottom line. Um, It is the Supreme Court that uh, people are going to have to hang their hat on in this election. Um, The polls are out today showing a very tight race in a couple of the important states the key states, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida. Uh, Trump's ahead in at least one of them, maybe more, well within the margin of error in all of them, and, and, and ahead four points in Ohio. That's a big deal. Our guest this hour is uh, Roger Stone. He was an advisor to Donald Trump and has been a political uh, analyst of, as well. And, Roger, how are you? I'm great. Delighted to be back with you here. Hey, thr- thrilled to have you on, and I'm glad you give us some time today. Uh, what's your reaction to these polls, uh, this Quinnipiac poll that came out? Uh, I'm unfamiliar with the head-to-heads there. You want to tell me? Yeah, I'm, absolutely. Uh, so uh, the Quinnipiac poll released uh, Tuesday showed that um, that Clinton has a one-point lead over Trump in Florida and Pennsylvania if the election were held today, and that Trump leads Ohio by 4%. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. First of all, I think it's important to recognize that any poll is merely a snapshot in time, um, that those states are as close as they are and that Trump is, uh, you know, and Hillary are both within the margin um, is intriguing just based on geography. These are some of the so-called blue states that should not be that competitive. And the fact that even in Florida, without a Marco Rubio or a Jeb Bush, Trump is um, – uh, is competitive. I would point out to you that Mitt Romney only lost Florida by 30,000 votes, but Donald Trump got 385,000 more votes than Romney in the Republican primary. Right. So uh, I think Florida is, um, you know, is in very strong shape. I would also think that Hillary um, has not had the kind of incoming from Bernie uh, that um, <laughs> that would have been more damaging to her. He, uh, for reasons that I think have to do with the dynamic of the Democratic primary, he doesn't talk about her role abusing Bill's, uh, you know, sexual assault victims and his ex-girlfriends and a long train of others that the Clintons, men, women, and children have abused viciously in their climb to power and greed. They, uh, they don't talk about the disaster. She is not, he has not taken her on on her disastrous foreign policy in the Middle East and Benghazi. Never, he, he's not interested in her emails, which lead to the epic corruption, the nexus between the State Department and the Clinton Foundation, which is the largest money laundering scheme in U.S. history. It is a, a multi-billion dollar scam. Uh, and it, it is uh, it is so transparent and so ridiculous, even though they go to great lengths to hide what they are doing offshore or to uh, manipulate money through various vehicles. I mean, this is a, a vehicle for the facilitation of giant multi-million dollar bribes, and the Clintons have paid no price for it because Bernie hasn't really raised it yet. So there's a lot of issues that Trump can raise that will that will increase his prospects, but. All of what you tell me today from Quinnipiac is good news. Well, I know that Bernie isn't willing to go there. It, it's not an understatement, Roger Stone, to say that you wrote the book on the Clinton's war on women because that's the title of it. Uh, Donald Trump is not afraid to go there. And, in fact, he went there yesterday <laughs> from well, one of the bites is, that this I is a very This is a very, very key point because on CNN, Chris Cuomo attempted to challenge him. Let's be clear. This is not about consensual sex or marital infidelity or adultery or Bill's girlfriends. This is about rape and sexual assault uh, and then the tactics to bully 
the women uh, who are, are victims, including some ex-girlfriends, uh, you know, by by uh, a a campaign of terror to intimidate and threaten these women into silence, either going public and or in some cases uh, responding to a subpoena to silence them. And Hillary has been in the forefront of that effort. She has directed it. In some cases, in the case of Juanita Broderick, she tried to intimidate her to her face. In other cases, she used these heavy-handed private detectives to break into people's homes, to ransack their homes, to break into their cars, to smash their windshields, to slash their tires, to threaten their children, to kill their pets. What? Yeah. And, and thank God somebody's out there reminding people of these things that went on. Hillary Clinton talks about it all like it was... It's old news, and this these, has been these, debated these, for years. These, had, these people, had, these, these thugs, had people viciously beaten, and in some cases, there are many, many indications that they're involved in murder. Hillary Clinton's incapable of telling the truth. She lies when it would be easier to 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 be truthful. How how? And I know that you're not on the the staff anymore for uh, Donald Trump. I'm an independent operator. You are an independent operator. How how does he? go after her, and maybe we've already seen some evidence of it in a general election with her playing the woman card at every turn and not alienate female voters that he needs to bring over. I think think explaining how she's abused women will be very disturbing to young uh, uh, millennial women who uh, have no frame of reference for Hillary Clinton or her boorish husband. They don't know the history here. They aren't old enough. So this is a re-education. I think people will find uh, the the Paula Joneses, the the uh, Juanita Brodericks, the 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 Kathleen Willies, the Kathy Sheltons, others uh, abused by the Clintons. Let these ladies speak for themselves, and then let the voters decide. Hillary is, according to yesterday's Wall Street Journal, is not going to address any of this. She just won't answer questions on it. Yeah. Well, then let the women, let the American people hear these women and decide whether they're telling the truth. As Hillary said, they deserve to be believed. We're talking to Roger Stone. We're running our own poll here on the radio show today, uh, uh, asking people how they feel about some of the, well, they're not really the Never Trumper crowds, but but Paul Ryan and, and our local 2nd District Congresswoman Ann Wagner, who both come out publicly and said they're not ready to either endorse or show their support for him yet. Um, what's your reaction to folks like that who are leaders in the Republican Party who – are showing a hesitance to get on board. Yeah, look, I think it, it, people lose sight of something, and that is Reince Priebus, the Republican national chairman who chaired the last losing campaign for president, uh, is a political associate of Paul Ryan, not not Walker, not Romney. Many people are confused about that, but his political heritage is Ryan. They want to continue to control the levers of the Republican Party, in specific the Republican National Committee. So to, in Thursday's meeting, Ryan will argue for some kind of hybrid autonomy where he will work with the Trump campaign, but the Trump campaign will not take control of the Republican National Committee, as every Republican nominee has from the beginning of the party in, the, in 1860. So uh, it is very unlikely that Trump w- is going to buy that. A lot of the squabbles about money. The RNC is going to want to use the, uh, the data trust, which is owned by Karl Rove, uh, which is, I think, uh, not good data, dirty data, <laughs> clean data, uh, outdated data, and may have fragments of the vaunted uh, Orca system, which crashed on Election Day. Oh, this boy. may be Orca 2.0. Uh, call Mitt Romney, call your office. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I think a lot of this has to do with money and power. Uh, Ryan is going to argue for auton- autonomy from the House and Senate committee. Everybody's going to kind of go their own ways but agree to loosely work together. Trump, I doubt, buys any of this uh, and will assert his his rights. And, uh, you know, if Ryan's an open border guy. He is a, he is a uh, free trader and supports these crazy globalist trade deals. He really is antithetical to Trump in every way. He has a serious primary from his right, from a real conservative uh, in his district. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I think it's a mistake. The media is focused on a very small group of people. The never Trump group, maybe 5%. Instead, they should focus on the millions of new people coming to the party through our primary process. There's 1 million unregistered Trump voters in, in 10 states that I can name. And, and these aren't hard. Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, 
and so on, Colorado, Iowa, places where this is going to be decided. Trump can go register those people. Nobody else can. Nobody else can. These are non-Republicans who are prepared to register to vote for the Republican nominee. Many of them will will register as independents, but many will join the party. Now is the time. Instead, we're focusing not on the millions, but on a handful. (laughs) And it's just really, it's all lobbyist and donor, you know, generated. A lot of it's just bitterness. I hope I hope that you're right on that. One, one final question. A lot of people that call in here who have told me they're going to struggle to vote for Donald Trump. Their concern is that he's that he's flip flopped on a couple of issues over the years and they're not sure he'll do what he says he's going to do when he gets there. What's your answer to that? Uh, I think he has evolved on some issues as his personal circumstances, his life's experience has evolved as he's learned new things, as he's had different experiences. But he is one of the most stubborn guys I know. <laughs> he is without any question the single toughest human being I've ever met. In a negotiation, uh, in a tense situation, the guy has ice water in his veins. This is the guy I want negotiating for the United States. Uh, on the fi- I'm not going to argue that he's a pure conservative. He's not. He's a he's a populist conservative, or he's a he's a guy he's a populist who leans conservative, but on the four big issues facing the country, which to me are immigration, are, well, our fiscal situation, immigration, trade, uh, and uh, our, our disastrous foreign policy, I think he is takes the most conservative position, reasonable conservative position. He's a non-interventionist. That. That foreign policy speech was very calibrated. He is no neocon, not a neocon, right. not a president who will go out looking for, for trouble around the world. Opposed the Iraq war. Uh, he is clearly to Hillary's left on trade. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's for sound money. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's the best choice considering all of the alternatives. Is he a perfect candidate? Well, He's a flawed candidate, but he's also supercharged because everybody knows who he is. His star quality, his celebrity quality is his ticket to the dance. Then he has the ability to get everybody to listen, and he's sparked a revolution. It's, uh... with, no po- with no polling, with no paid television to speak of, paid radio, analytics, targeting, uh, phone, you know, with any of these accoutrements that we all think are standard in American politics, he's done it with all, all of them. It's a genuine grassroots uprising roger stone i appreciate your time today i direct people to your website the stone it's stonezone.com stonezone.com to get my books the clinton's war on women and jeb and the bush crime family rogerstone.com many thanks excellent you take care of yourself thank you roger stone joining us today with uh, more on uh, this um trump phenomenon you heard he worked for the man Uh, he's got a little bit of inside knowledge on him anyway Coming up next, Chris Arps from MoveOnUp.org. We're going to talk about uh, some of the president's comments yesterday and uh, this crazy primary race. Stick around. You're listening to The Mark Cox Show.